How's the bacon, did you say? It's two Oh, what a fantastic hit! Roy Keane on Holland. Here's Sancho. Aguero! I swear you'll never see anything like this ever again! Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Prawn Sandwich Podcast. I thought I was going to mess it up then, Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> We've just been talking uh, before we went live. Our Dill once messed it up when we were recording, and I genuinely thought I was going to trip over my words. Emphasis anyway. on emphasis on once, by the way. Like, <laughs> <laughs> never let it down. <laughs> it was. <laughs> uh, I'm your host, Jamie Jackson, joined by Dylan McKenzie and Nathan Cupid. Hello. How's it going, boys? Hi, everybody. Uh, Today we're doing another player profile and it's been my choice again. We've all been pretty excited about uh, about this one as is one is a proper f- pod favorite. It's uh, Gabriel Omar Batistuta or Batigol as uh, <sighs> more common than known I guess. <laughs> Um, sticking to the Argentina theme because uh, I, I chose Tevez on my last one as well. I've just got a, I've just got a proper love for Argentina forwards, it seems. Um, but yeah, so we'll be going through the career of Gabriel Batistuta, um, talking about some of our favourite moments and stuff, just the usual stuff that we've done on our previous uh, player profiles. Have uh, you had good fun uh, researching this one, lads? Loved it. Oh, I normally do. Um, so for like listeners and that, I've got like a little book that I, I always use and I always do like one page and then my 11 goes on the other page. For this and I've got two and a half pages, then squeeze my 11 on the bottom of the third. <laughs> oh, <that's>, <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely loved it. That's, uh, that's impressive. Like, that is impressive. It. It's, it's just been a sheer like goal montage porn fest <laughs> oh. <laughs> like the last week. Like I was sat in, uh, I was sat, I've been back at work and uh, had a little break, so I thought I'll, I'll fire it on my desk and uh, sit and watch um, Gabriel Batistuta's best Serie A goals compilation. And I had like two other members of staff just around us, and we're all just like, "Oh my god, he was some player, eh, wasn't he?" <laughs> <laughs> it, like I have genuinely felt like I've been seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve year old again. Like just, oh. It's been it's been such a joy, and like I don't know about yous, um, but you see, when I was growing up in the nineties, like I always thought Fiorentina must have been like this massive club. <laughs> they weren't really, yeah. No, nah, so, nah. like the loyalty had to stay there for so long. Like we'll get into it obviously as we like <laughs> move through his career, but I, oh, like some of their league finishes in that time were piss poor, like oh. It's the whole set. Like, the, like we call it the big six. They were our lot, but back then it, the Italians obviously give everything a nickname, and it was the seven sisters because there were seven teams that could win the league at any point. Like, unreal. Oh, it's mad. Like as I say, I always thought they were a massive club, and they'd, they'd only won like they had won Serie A in the past, but it was like once in the once in the sixties and once in the fifties. Something. Yeah, something like that. Eh? Uh, but anyway, back to back to Batigol, born on the first of February nineteen sixty nine. Uh, could have been a lot different for him, couldn't he? He uh, had more interest in being a basketballer apparently when he was when he was younger. Yep, because uh, of his height. Yeah, absolute beast. Like six foot one, and then when you watch the footage of him back, it was so fast as well. Oh, like, just, I, I didn't realise what a fast player he was. Like I don't the remember spring as well. Fast. The spring in his jump as well, so you definitely tell him make a good basketballer. Yeah. So athletic. So athletic. Machine. Um, started off his career as most top, top Argentina forwards do at Newell's Old Boys. <laughs> uh, before, obviously, moving on and playing in Europe. Um, but he did play, he's one of the few players that actually... Played for both River Plate and Boca Juniors whilst in Argentina and made the move from River to Boca um, after obviously leaving leaving Newell's. Um, at Newell's Old Boys, it was quite nice to see that it was Bielsa that he uh, that he played under. Um, his first year there, though, uh, he struggled because it wasn't his local club, was it? 
So, um, I've lost a page here. I was on a roll then. <laughs> you struggled to play Bielsa ball. <laughs> but uh, it's one season at Newell's anyway. Seven goals in uh, 24 league appearances before getting a move to River Plate. Again, he struggled at River Plate as well. Only getting four goals in 21 before getting his move to Boca. It was really, it was that season, that 1990-91 season of Boca Juniors that uh, really got his reputation up. Uh, 19 goals in 47 appearances in all competitions and of course winning the uh, Argentina Primera Division with them there. Um, like a lot of uh, Argentina players at the time, it was, it was like a, a foot in the door in Europe, wasn't it? That you moved to Spain, you moved to Italy. Yeah. Rules in England were a bit different back then and obviously the Premier League hadn't really kicked in and all this money. And it, English football wasn't really an attractive option for foreign players at the time, really, was it? Uh, they were only just back in Europe. Um, so after years of being banned from playing in European competition after high soul, it was uh, you didn't get many foreign players in English league at the time. But it was Fiorentina, of course, that uh, took a chance from him after his glowing appearances in the 1991 Copa America for Argentina. Uh, we're going to move on to his uh, international career a little bit later on. Um, but yeah, so Fiorentina in Serie A, 13 goals in his debut season. Um, Fiorentina themselves, though, were struggling a bit at the time. Not really a team for the star players, obviously. They just lost Baggio a couple of years before to Juventus. And, uh, I think they had uh, Diego Fusa was the top scorer of the season before Batagol joined from midfield with like nine goals. <laughs> So, but uh, sign him and well, the rest is history when it comes to Fiorentina and Bacol, isn't it? Yeah, pure. His, uh, his I've got I've got a nice quote here if you want it. Go on then, fire away. Uh, so, just for people, I've been reading a book called Carl Show's Greatest Forwards, and this quote is, well, it's given by. It was in it. It was in it. It was in it. It was in summer on a tag, but it's given by Giancarlo Ronaldo, and it's. Guerrero Madomo, Duranella Lotta, Lanella Mino, described as a never defeated warrior, strong in the battle, but loyal in the spirit. And that was how we liked him. <laughs> Unreal. Something just so romantic about, oh. <laughs> <laughs> about footballers. I read that, I was like, Jesus. Oh, they, only, wow. they only finished 12th in that first season with him there. It's better than the second season. Better than the second season, indeed. In the. Uh, 92-93 season because back then City A only had 18 teams in and the bottom yeah. three still went down Fiorentina finished 16th relegated um, Batistuta has got 19 goals though in the league that year um, a lot of talk at the time apparently when you look back interest from the likes of Real Madrid Barcelona but I think it's like you, like you just said in that quote there, it's that word loyalty. Yeah. Like, it's still it's still young there. He's only, what, 23, 24. That's yeah. Property. Scoring 19 goals in the early 90s in the city, yeah. Like, even it, if he was relegated, that's... Uh, that's but you've got to think as well, like, it, Italian football wasn't exactly like what it is now, where, like, more strikers... Can get a, de- a handful of goals in Italy now, whereas back then you'd be looking at it, if you're a striker, you, you'd be considered outstanding if you've got 10 goals in a season. Like the standard of defending in the 90s in Italy is ridiculous, especially the early, the earlier 90s. I yeah, think once the once they started getting the better forwards going and the, the Italian football changed a bit um, completely. Um, they had well, what they did, didn't they? They had the best forwards in the world, basically. Oh, yeah, like, best league in the world. Time. During that entire decade, yeah. This European Super League that they've been talking about <laughs> recently, there was a European Super League in the 1990s and it was Serie A. Uh, it was <laughs> unreal. <laughs> <laughs> but he stuck with them despite relegation in that 92-93 season. 
scoring 16 goals in 26 league games in City B to help them get promoted. And it was around that time as well that uh, was the World Cup at the end of I know we said we'd touch on his um, international career a bit later on, but I think we'd have to mention it given given the fact it was the tournament where Maradona got booted out for his um, <laughs> <laughs> fiendish antics. But Batistuta start a bit of a star of that World Cup. Yeah, I remember you once saying on a previous pod that Batistuta was uh, always top scorer in the World Cup as long as he was actually in the World Cup. Yeah. It wasn't until after he got, obviously, Argentina get eliminated that people would overtake him as top goal scorers. So, obviously, Ball Italia and Channel 4 was maybe just quite fr- fresh to the TV screens back here then, but obviously World Cups are televised all over the world. So, his reputation on a world stage after that World Cup must surely have grown massively. Yeah, I definitely. It was the following season, the 94-95 season, that like his numbers really started hitting massive heights. 26 league goals in 32 league games. This is most Zero. prolific in Serie A, though, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Um, it, was, it was the only time he was top scorer in the actual division itself. Mm. With Claudio Ranieri as gaffer. Yeah. Well, Love Cla- it. Cla- Claudio Ranieri said a really, really nice quote about him in his time at Fiorentina. said, if Fiorentina were playing in Europe, he'd be considered like for the Ballon d'Or every season. Is that like, nice. Because, it, yeah, the, but they weren't finishing in high positions, basically. Yeah. That, that 94 95 season, they finished 10th. They got to the quarterfinals of the Coppa Italia, but they're not getting in Europe. <laughs> it's, it's mad. Like, as I say, I always considered them a, like, like a big side. Massive, massive side. Sorry, just to put in for like the YouTubers and that, um, my camera keeps going off because Hafe was pure kicking my ass and no one needs to see me blowing us. <laughs> <laughs> just where everyone was wondering what the hell's going on <laughs> yeah. uh, he's, he's muting his microphone to blow it off screen it <laughs> yeah. off, uh, off mic as well so I'm listen. putting some graft on this episode yeah. <laughs> <laughs> such a class such a class so stick it, sticking with uh, his Fiorentina form moving on from the 94 95 season. The 95 96 season was a bit of a turning point for Fiorentina, I feel, in the 90s. A fourth place finish, which obviously nowadays would get you a Champions League, but it was all a bit different back then. You had to win the league, and then there were some runners up that were lucky enough to enter qualifying rounds. Um, and the rest would cy- cipher down for UEFA Cup. But they actually won the Coppa Italia that year, which means the following season they will qualify for the Club World Cup. Gabriel Batistuta's first bit of silverware since moving to Europe and scoring a cool 26 goals in the 95-96 season as well. Unreal. Absolutely unbelievable, man. Uh, his fig- figures just get a bit ridiculous after that. I think he kind of like took the mantle, didn't he? I think he was kind of like, right, I'm sick to death of waiting for the ball to come to me. I'm just going to just do it now. <laughs> Must be mid though, like 90, 93, 94, what, you win Serie B and then 95, 96, you're already winning yeah. two trophies fin- and back at, fourth, back at finishing fourth. I think yeah. it's worth noting as well, in the 90, in 1994, that's when Rui Costa signed for Fiorentina. Yeah. So... <clears throat> He scored 26 goals in Serie A in that 94-95 season with the addition of Rui Costa to that midfield. Yeah. Like, Rui, like, obviously, he got a move to AC Milan. Rui, just to touch on Rui Costa a sec, at the start of the millennium, he was, was like 30 year old when he got that move to AC Milan. He was one of the best midfielders in Europe. Yeah. From, I... from like 1995 to 2000. That's quality. 
So again, like another like another player sticking loyal to Fiorentina in that time. Must Although, be like, something about Florence. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It's, it's the kits, eh? They've always got pure tidy kits. I the other way. Where were we? So, yeah, so won the Coppa Italia in the 95 96 season. Scored 19 goals in Serie A, 27 goals in all competitions. 96 97 season. So, they had a hell of a run in the Cup Winners' Cup this year. Hell of a run in the Cup Winners' Cup. Um, it was Barcelona that actually knocked them out in the semi-finals and it was Barcelona that went on to win the tournament who had a certain other iconic number nine <laughs> <laughs> playing for them. Won the Super Cup of that year as well. Missed yeah, that. they did. Just before. Well, but ba- Batigol actually scored in the in the first leg of the semi-final which was at the new Camp. Yeah. Um, ba- Barcelona obviously went on to Went on to win that tournament. I just forgot to mention that previous season where they the won the Coppa Italia. When you were watching the game back, did you? They played Inter in the semis and then Atalanta in the final. And the games were always over two legs, even the finals back then in Italy. Yeah. Batistuta scored in all four legs of the semi finals <laughs> and the final. So good, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's, like, with. Uh, we're not really talking in depth about his goals just yet because we've got a little segment later where we're going to go through, going to go through <laughs> our favourite goals. A couple of them will get mentioned, like probably while we're talking about them. Oh, um, to be fair, there's 187 of them alone for Serie A, so you know what I mean. <laughs> oh, obscene, <laughs> obscene numbers. Um, despite getting to the semi-finals of the. Cup Winners' Cup, though, in 96-97. It was ninth place in the league. Again, disappointing. And the round of 16 for the Coppa Italia. Uh, but it was after that, Ranieri left and Giovanni Trapattoni came in to manage Fiorentina around that time. Serial winner. Absolutely. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Signs Andrea Kanchelskis from Everton in that summer. <laughs> that's that's going to win the league. <laughs> the, pro- the problem was, like, when you're looking back at some of the squads that they had, like, obviously, they've got Rui Costa in midfield and ba- Gabriel Batistuta. They're going to be like the linchpins of these sides. There's never any like great defenders that jump nah. out to you. Nah. You're reading through some of your senior squads. At nah. All. Like, Not at all. We, we mentioned Thomas Repka there. Like Thomas Repka wasn't a, like a world class centre back. <laughs> I was, man. <laughs> you tried telling West Ham fans that <laughs> West Ham <laughs> like had like awful finishes while they were there. Not... <laughs> <laughs> I think he could be maybe he's, maybe he's be accused of being like a big fish in a small pond, but. And like liking that kind of situation, yeah. but he could definitely like never, the goals speak for themselves. You know what I mean? As an outsider looking in, like I was very young at the time, but like even growing up and like you're a bit biased to the football that you grew up with. I've never never looked at Fiorentina as a small pond. <laughs> yeah, never, never never have, and they were only ever in the Champions League once. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A bit like I, nowadays, Atalanta. Yeah, I. Atalanta you, have I, now been in the Champions League more times than Fiorentina ever were. Yeah, but kids now will probably think Atalanta well, are a big yeah, team because yeah. they've played like Liverpool and that. But when they look yeah. back, the like four or five years ago, they'll be like, "What?" Yeah, I. Yeah. Like, or even like, like we're doing like twenty years on. And you'd be yeah. Like, Jesus, Atalanta. <laughs> 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 Getting those pipes and our flat caps and slippers and all that and proper old men. <laughs> Back in my day, Atlanta were brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, that follow following season from the uh ninth place finish uh, it was a redeemed some league form, finishing fifth in the league in ninety seven, ninety eight, getting to the quarter finals of the Coppa Italia. The Kanchelskis effect. Kanchelskis effect, indeed. 
Batistuta were getting 21 league goals in 31 league games, 24 in all competitions. But the following season was... The 98-99 season must go down as, like, the biggest disappointment in Fiorentina's history. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It was when the... Uh, was that the start of the season where Batistuta scored in the first 11 games in the season? Just, just Yeah, games. just straight yeah. out the cannon. Straight out the cannon. Like, straight from the off. They'd signed Ed Mundo, <laughs> which <laughs> proved to be a bit of a disaster in the end. <laughs> <laughs> to help, it, help take the pressure off him. I think Delivio had returned. Delivio returned at this point? Yeah, Delivio was back. Delivio was back. Um, Toldo in goal obviously Toldo's been a mainstay of this side for as long as Batistuta has just about yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah th- this this was the season you've got Trapattoni there he's had a year of bedding Batistuta is now like approaching the very peak of his career is what he should be given the age he's 29 year old at this point but Fiorentina are flying absolutely flying all the way through this season Again, it gets to around January, February, and Batistuta gets injured. And just like we mentioned in the recent Club World Cup tournament, Edmundo, who should have been <laughs> stepping in to fill the void when his injury came in, was like, no, 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 no. I'm going to the Rio Carnival for a few weeks. It's in my contract. And basically, the momentum was gone once Batistuta got injured. Yeah, completely. The season, basically, season basically fell apart and it, it took a lot to actually turn it back around. Um, they did end up finishing third, which would qualify them for the following season's Champions League. Mm-hmm. But really, they should probably have won eight games that season, which might not seem like a lot, but the games that the lost games against AC Milan, um, Atlanta, funnily enough, at that important juncture in the season, yeah, especially as AC, AC Milan went on to win the league with uh, I think Lazio the runners up, and Fiorentina only just scraped third. Interesting fact about that season, they were in the UEFA Cup and were in the back when it was like round of 32, round of 16. Aye. They won their game. They should have went through in the round of 32, but a fan threw a like a missile slash bomb onto the pitch at a match official. I see. Now read this. Yeah, <laughs> injured him. So as punishment, they got like kicked out the tournament. Because I'm not being funny with the squad they had that UEFA Cup in the 98 99 season. Like they'd, they'd have had a great chance of winning that as well. Yeah. Exactly. Absolutely, it's kind of that's like a run where like Italian clubs were minting the UEFA Cup as well, wasn't it? Like that, it's yeah, kind of like their yeah, cup. Yeah, that that decade, Italian t- Parma won what two UEFA Cups? Um, I think Inter beat Cup. Schalke, didn't they? Yeah, in, Inter won UEFA Cup. Lazio won a cup winners' cup in the UEFA Cup. Yeah, Juventus won a UEFA <laughs> Cup in Champions League. <laughs> AC Milan won what two Champions League? Two Champions Leagues. Absolutely ridiculous Italian teams in Europe, and that, that's definitely why you like just considered all the Italian teams mint as well. Yeah, I think that's what it was, especially when we were growing up. Like, say, like on about like Fiorentina not being a big club. It's like as soon as you like, it's just, you just like you tar it with that brush, don't you? So like, AC Milan are winning everything. So like, here comes another club from Italy. You're like, oh god, these must be mint. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's mad. Like, but you you wouldn't have known when you were that age that. Fiorentina had been relegated early. Oh, no, nah, not at all. Come back up. And like, and Palmer's success, Palmer had only ever got to the Serie A in the, early, yeah. the back end of the 80s. They'd never been in Serie A before. And then they were going on <laughs> and winning the Cup Winners' Cups, UEFA Cups and that. Exactly. So money in football is not a new thing, kids. No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. A few years after this win, Italian teams all just went bust from spending money they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, third place finish in the league and a runners up, runners up in the Italian Cup and another prolific season for our man. 
as I say, 21 goals in 28 games and 26 goals in all competitions that season. Well, I think the following season, most definitely, would have been where Batty Stewart introduced himself properly. Oh, yeah. To any kind of like armchair English fan that hadn't watched football Italia and hadn't really seen much of him on an international stage. Because let's not forget, we've skipped over the 98 World Cup there because we'll come on to it later. Yeah. Where he, well, played class there, scored yeah. against England, <laughs> um, scored five goals or something in the whole competition. Um, but the 99-2000 season, when Fiorentina finally get to go in the Champions League, and we've, we've got it, it's in our opening, it's in our opening <laughs> credits. <laughs> <laughs> the commentary from his goal against Man United, when yeah. I mean, he was linked with Man United all the time. Aye, uh, in the night, especially after Cantona left, there was that two or three year period where it was clear Ferguson wanted like. A number nine. Top, 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 like number nine. And for him to rinse Yap Stam, who was arguably like, what, top three centre-backs in the world at One the of the best defenders on the planet, yeah. Just mugged him clean off. and With two touches. Rocket, yeah, two touches <laughs> and then a rocket from bloody 30, 35 yards that just went right through Bosnich. Hi. And Big Ron has the audacity to say that he should have saved it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Big Ron, what a guy. He 100% just... have meant that as well. Oh, yeah. And, Definitely. Uh, that, uh, he scored six goals in 11 games in that Champions League. And obviously what would prove to be his final season at Fiorentina. And he scored against Arsenal as well, of course. And not what a finish that was or not. That's, That's the one awesome. at Wembley Stadium. Yeah, we like leaves Winterburn and just he, smashes he, it above. He draws, it, he draws him in. He's yeah. like, there's like one touch in it. If you like analyze it, he draws him in and then he's like, bye. Oh, it's mint. Like, oh, it's just great goal. He, 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 he nearly made my three, to be honest. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I just like how he, he gets him in and then Winterburn's like, oh, I've got him here. Then, bye. And then see him, he just puts his hands up like, yeah. It's, it's gone no through keep, them. No keepers saving. It's gone through them. Nah, man. nah I absolutely. I know he's, he's got. A, what I found watching all these goal compilations and that, every, like everybody has this generalization that Batty Stewart was just rocket, 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 like every goal. And I bear yeah. in mind the two that we've mentioned in detail so far have been. <laughs> but it wasn't just that. Eh? Like there is no this, type of goal this, he could not score. Nah. Yeah, but every footballer can. They're not obviously the same. Every footballer can probably hit a ball hard. Keeping it down is a different. Yeah, yeah. It's skill. knowing how to strike the ball. He, he it's a different like skill. For, yeah, while sprinting as well. A lot yeah. Of the time. And the balls were heavier back then as well. <laughs> I think there's only really for like the amount of goals he scored. Van Persie that gets maybe near him for like shot power goals. Like I know of it. Everyone likes to bang on about Adriano, but Adriano didn't get as many goals as like Batty Stewart is. Yeah. I didn't think Adriano about Van Persie. Shoot from anywhere. It is rockets. I didn't think about <laughs> Van Persie. I was like I was thinking about comparisons and like the only one, as much as I do bang on about him, but the only one I could like kind of compare to him would maybe be Cavani, but like even then he's not touching Batty Stewart. Yeah. Similar kind of build as well. <laughs> Yeah. Like as I say, those, those goals compilations that we've been able to watch. There's one on YouTube that's half an hour long and it's every goal. <laughs> and if you've got a spare half an hour, just sit and watch. Just oh, yeah. Put, yeah. pull up a box of Kleenex and just sit and watch it <laughs> because you're going to have a good 30 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dill's already that. prepped. Do Dill's it ready. quite regular. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that 99 2000 season for Fiorentina, again, a season where they maybe could have. Thought they had a, a chance of, of winning the league, but poor league form again, seventh um, quarterfinals of the Coppa Italia and second second group stage in the Champions League. Yeah, yeah. Weird, weird. The two era. group stage phase of the Champions League is something I never want to go back to. Oh, fucking hell, too much football, man. <laughs> <laughs> it was straight to the quarterfinals for the city, but an extra four games of what you normally Yeah, I. Two group stages, man. 
So if we just just have a quick skim over like all those league finishes, like let's forget the relegation and the promotion from Serie, like back up from Serie B. Yeah. So his time at Fiorentina, tenth, fourth, ninth, fifth, third, seventh, ninth, and only one of them, sorry, only two of them got him um, European qualification from a league finish. Bit of a waste in Europe, isn't it? It's ridiculous, isn't it? It is. Like, that entire decade where he's considered one of the best strikers in the world, one of the best footballers on the planet, he only played in Europe three times. Exactly. Cup winners' cup. Um, No, sorry. Sorry. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, three times. Cup winners' cup where they got to the semi-final. UEFA Cup where they got booted out of the round of 32 because of a fan throwing something at the line. (laughs) Uh, the Champions League, the second group stage. I will flip it though, and you say like, he's not at Fiorentina. <sighs> do we do we love him and have that romance with him as much? Like, yeah, I know for a fact he's at Man United. I don't. Yeah, I don't. and that's not me saying I don't like Man United strikers because people like Dwight York and Andy Cole, but I don't love him. Yeah, like, he's in the Fiorentina kit. I know. I know what you mean. I. Uh... Yeah, I one hundred percent. You could just see what it meant was them every time he scored. Yeah, mm. I tell you what, yeah. I really, I really liked about watching these videos back, and it, it, it is a bit weird because we haven't watched like any football over the last year with fans. Yeah, hundred percent. It, it does make such a difference when you're watching old videos and getting fans' reactions. Oh, uh, and getting the crowd reactions and the way players are celebrating with the fans. Definitely. You just you just see the energy from it. Yeah. And that's it, one of my oh it's just like an all time memory that I have of him. Like he fires it in top corner, he's got them black boots on with the Reebok fucking the big Reebok badge on. He goes on one knee, he does the guns and his hair's everywhere. He's just yeah. min- and he's screaming at the top of his voice, man. Oh it just doesn't look like a footballer. He's got that fucking mane flying it's about just everywhere. It's <laughs> his hair's <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> oh, Fucking get big man, like beard and that. He's built it's like a brick amazing. shit house. In his kicking centre halves all over the pitch. <laughs> yeah, well, and they're booting him. Yeah, exactly. His, uh, his ankles were a fucking mess, like. <laughs> but there's a thing I'd, I'd read um, when we're doing things and that. Um, I think it's on. I can't remember what thing I'd read it on, but it. it it got to one point where his legs were hurting him that much that he actually went to a hospital and pleaded for them to take. They cut his legs off him because he just couldn't yeah, uh, bear after, the pain. After after his retirement, yeah, his ankles. One ankle in particular, he, he wanted amputated because it was giving him giving him that much pain. Yeah. yeah. Look at the goals he's got, man. Like. <laughs> but, uh, Fu- no, Fu- his last season at Fiorentina. The stats for it, 23 league goals in 30 games, 29 goals in all competitions. And in Italy's capital, a certain Fabio Capello has been in charge for a season. And Roma are determined to make a go of winning a Scudetto for the first time since 1981. hope I've got that right. <laughs> <laughs> um do you know the story about how he signed for how he signed for Roma? I just quality. thought because he was fed up and not winning one, and he felt like <laughs> he deserved one. <laughs> so, oh, just just before we move on to Roma, because obviously, Batistuta uh, later on inducted into the Hall of was inducted into both teams Hall of Fame. Um, a little quote he said about Fiorentina: "From the moment I arrived at Fiorentina, I wanted a place in the history of the club." Now I can say I've succeeded. That was uh, a quote from when he got inducted into the Hall of Fame some 15 years after. And then he wiped away a tear with the scarf, if you watch it. It's pure sod. Beautiful. Oh, Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> well, nothing nothing <laughs> better than a South American crying like. <laughs> oh, <I know. laughs> but yeah, the, basically, Fabio Capello determined to win the league with Roma. He's just been in charge at Real Madrid. Um, Roma's president Stefano Sensi authorised signings of Walter Samuel, which could be almost considered as equally as important as the signing of Batistuta. 
Hearts um, had Toshi Nakata had moved there halfway through Capello's first season. Christian Panucci um, eventually arrived in due course. But Capello and the director, Franco Baldini, devised a plot to sign Batistuta because uh, Stefano Sensi wouldn't authorise that amount of money on a player that had no resale value, that couldn't really afford, and was, what, 31-year-old? Yeah. So Capello and Baldini went out for dinner and hatched a plan that Baldini was going to get in touch with a journalist he was friendly with, and they told him to run with a front-page headline of Rome's local paper, Sensini buys Batigo. Like, just so then, it would stroke the ego of Sensi when the fans' adulation would be so much that he couldn't oh, not so he goes go and does it. <laughs> Fabio Capello, man. Love so that. The story breaks, comes out, and then Sensini's um, Sensi's awoke by Rome fans chanting his name outside his house and he doesn't understand why and then he's obviously the news has got to him and he's like oh shit I've got <laughs> I've got to I've got to buy back his <laughs> unreal so 36.2 million euros uh, for a 31 year old world record transfer for a player over the age of 30 at the time a record that stood for 17 years, such was the magnitude of the signing, Unreal. the quality of the player at the time. And, well, it worked. Oh, it I did it. Worked. That, I mean, that Roma side was a hell of a side, and we spoke about it before. <laughs> but the, the front two, of, well, the front four options that they had that season, oh. of Batistuta, Montella, Totti, and Del Vecchio, we just every every week you'd see it on a uh, um, football football Italia. Just goal four. after goal just after goal. Either one of them or like a few of them scoring. Every oh, week. there isn't a team in Europe or even on the planet that any one of them four couldn't walk into at that time. Yeah. And, and Del Vecchio was like a pure, like he was like fourth choice. He was like the worst one of the lot of them. <laughs> if, 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 I know. If you were to cut, if you were to, I'm, and I'm not comparing them to Man United's. Four that won the treble, <laughs> like front four. But like, if you were to like put them in like a pecking order, a Toki a, a, a lot of the time played just behind, like Montella and Batistuta. They were <laughs> they were the main choice, and Totti played. Like, they get, as, as yeah, team. yeah. It was a bit later on in his career, wasn't he? That he played more as a centre forward. But like Del Vecchio would have been like your Sheringham of the 98-99 season to get a comparison. Quality footballer. Scored some important goals, but only a handful throughout the season. Mm. But it was just down to minutes. It was just down to minutes that he wasn't scoring. Um, he scored on his uh, Roma debut, which was a UEFA Cup game. Batistuta, not Del Vecchio. <laughs> <laughs> and it just took him. It just took him two games to get off the mark in Syria with goals against Lecce. And uh, well. Just like he had every other previous season for Fiorentina. Three seasons in a row, he scored over 20 goals in Serie A, and this one was no different. 20 goals in 28 games. His best strike rate in Serie A of his career um, for any time he's played less than 30 games. Um, only scored one, go- <laughs> yeah. one goal in Europe when they were in UEFA Cup, 21 goals in 32 games in all competition. Um, and, uh, again, I don't really want to talk about his goals because we'll come on to that shortly, <laughs> but it just it feels like we're skimming over a lot, but don't worry, we, we are going to talk about some of the goals he scored because there's one in particular in this season that's just... Mm-hmm. Oh, just, just pulls on the heartstrings like... Oh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah. A Scudetto, finally, after 10 years in Italy. And 168 goals in 269 league games for Fiorentina. His first season away for them. And it's 20 goals in 28 games and a Scudetto to his name. Unreal. Scott, yeah. I rem- I, I'll always remember that last game of the season against Parma, the 3-0, where he scores in that game. 
he doesn't score the third goal. I can't remember who gets the third. And there's about Montella. Montella left. gets the third yeah. one. And there's about ten minutes left. Yeah. And the, there's just a pitch inversion because, like, obviously the Skedettles. A big one. thing. And the referee just abandons the match. Yeah, all right, that's fine. Declared it winner. He's a player <laughs> to 75 minutes, lads. <laughs> it's a bit where, like, Fabio Capello has, like, gone full of, like, apart from hitting fans like Brian Clough, but Capello's turning around and screaming at fans, like, yeah. off the pitch. Like, he's got 15 yeah. minutes left. <laughs> There's fans, like, pleading for to- his socks and his shorts and that. <laughs> he, walk- he only walked away with his, with his boxers or something, didn't he? Right. Uh, it- Gen- yeah, genuinely yeah his, boot, like, his boots and his boxers. Yeah, uh, he comes off the pitch and just his boxers. He's like just stood there in his underwear, like fucking. It, it is Batistuta that scores the third. Is We're it? Over it. Oh, is it? Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Totti Montella Batistuta. Ah. Marco De Vallo scores the pointless eighty second goal, eighty second minute. Ah, uh, it was it was after that that the pitch invasion. Yeah, <laughs> they might come back here. <laughs> 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 Let's get that match abandoned. <laughs> He scored in both games against Palmer that season because the goal in the first game against Shut up. Palmer. <laughs> <laughs> let's not talk about goals. Oh yeah, let's just talk about goals. Just get, just get carried away, man. <laughs> you can't not win by goals involved. This, this season um, he gets called, um he gets top goal scorer of the season, didn't he? Is it, does he finish top goal um, scorer that season? No, no. Uh, Twenty. Uh, he only ever won it once. He only ever. Are you sure? And that was in. Yeah, when he got his 26. 94, 95. Yeah, I know he got that one, but I'm sure he's got more than one. No, I th- Unless it's inside the squad. Unless it's like Roma's yeah. top goal scorer. Shevchenko won it in 99-2000. Sheva. It was Dario Hubner and Trezeguet joint. <laughs> oh, no, sorry. That's or one or two. Um, Sorry. I thought he had more. It was... Crespo, 26. Oh, fair dues. It's first Aye. season at Lazio. My bad, my bad. It's first season at Lazio. To be fair, the Eagles take the title the season after. The season, season before. Is it? Season I thought it was... Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. get him mixed up big time. Because <laughs> Roma people hold that as well. Oh, yeah, Roma yeah. took yeah. it off them, didn't they? they from the, the city. <laughs> yeah, sorry, <laughs> yeah. Got it mixed up. <laughs> that isn't Milan Club or Juventus. <laughs> <laughs> Because, uh, well, as if anybody watching will obviously see what tops we've got on display. But anybody listening, uh, me and Nath both have the same 99-2000 Fiorentina shirt with Batistuta 9 on the back. Dill has hanging up the Roma shirt with Batistuta 18. 18 being his squad number in that season where they won the league. The following yep. season, was injuries totally catching up mm-hmm. on the body now. Um, which is evident in his goal scoring uh, record as well. Also, that they signed Antonio Cassano that summer for a lot of money. Great like player. 18 million or something like that. World record for a teenager at the time. Batty Stewart at this point is 32. Got Cassano coming through. Montella is still like 27. Adding Cassano to them strikers. <laughs> yeah, I, know. I know, man. It's ridiculous, isn't Del Vecchio it? Because went nowhere either. Right. So, <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> yeah. Just up, man. Cassano to them. So Antonio Antonio Cassano wanted the number eighteen. Imagine having the fucking balls to come into a t- club be like, yeah, number eighteen's my favourite number. I'm eighteen year old, I don't care, but like I want number eighteen. <laughs> so Batty Stuter was happy to oblige, handed it over, took the number twenty, because that was the amount of goals he'd scored the season before. <laughs> um, <laughs> But six goals in uh, 23 games in the league. Um, didn't score at all in Europe. Would have been unreal if the season after he went number six. <laughs> 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 oh, man. Um, but, yeah, like, his, his ankles at this point were were causing him a lot of bother. Um, mm. the, the following season after that, it was four goals in 12 games for Roma. Moved on loan to Inter Milan in the January, where he went on to score two goals in 12 games. Um, an attempted move to Fulham never came through. In uh, that would imagine that it would have been a shame because it would have been like a finished Batistuta, really. 
Yeah. Moving to like coming to play in England. So what year was that? Or four or five season? Or three or four. It was a start it was two thousand and three, moved to Qatar. No, was it not? Oh, so he's that into 2002-2003? Yeah. yeah. So, so he'd been up front with like Louis Saha and like Steve Marley or something. If he'd got the move to follow him, mm. I would have been Barry Hills. What I'm looking at. <laughs> Hills and Barry Stewart up front, man. That's a top four finish. <laughs> he'd have been up front with Brian McBride. Oh, nice. Barry Stewart's pacey. captain would have been Lee Clark. That is Percy. <laughs> uh, but yeah, as he's career dwindled down he uh, moved to Qatar played for Al Arabi he's got 25 goals in 18 games in his first season there mind was top he scorer he would take piss that in it yeah that, that is like he, I bet he barely moved I, I Pep bet Guardiola played in that season so I think Gaza played for a team in that season as well oh, he, he played for Mumbai in a Mumbai, for a Mumbai team or something at some point <laughs> he's got a worldy goal no, it was China. I he played he played a game in China once. Can you remember he went and played in China? He, he scored like a he scored a goal. He drove it from the halfway line and bagged it. It was, oh, it was mental. <laughs> I but it's still, uh, Kata, is it? I'm sure he's in the Qatari Hall of Fame, Qatari Football Hall of Fame. Wouldn't surprise me. I can't imagine. There's many. There's many. No, uh, I think me or you could get in that. <laughs> Fuck off, man. <laughs> 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 and. Uh, yeah, they, he, tr- he tried to play on the following season, played four games, and called it a day. Called it a day. <sighs> Sad times. <laughs> <laughs> so, 249 league goals in 444 league games, 300 goals in 555 games in all competition at club level. And... Oh, what a, what a footballer, man. Just Oh. Right, sorry to like put, put in and go back. I just thought, I'll have a little Google because I didn't do it right. 0304 squad for Al Arabi had Stefan Effenberg in centre mid with him. Yeah. Oh, nice quality. No, we already scored 25 goals. <laughs> oh, one, of them video, one of them goal videos is a picture of them both stood over a free kick and... Like I always tell myself, like Effenberg's like who's taking it, and I, I just get this feeling like he's like saying to himself, "Oh, you can just take it. My ankles are killing me." <laughs> <laughs> but his dude has got thirty-five free kicks in his career. I didn't know it. Set piece. Yeah. Imagine if he actually kicks. took penalties like all the time. Yeah. I if just... he was like a full-on like right, I'm taking penalties. Like some of his free kicks and all weren't like. Um... Like, I'm not gonna, I'm not saying it because we're Sunderland fans, but you know, when she was scored a free kick, like, she was never on free kicks for Newcastle if it wasn't over 22 yards. Yeah, but I still was something like 35 yards. You got like a pure scoop on it, it was uh, they, they were incredible. Like, it gets so much whip and power on them. Yeah, it's a pure specimen, like, <laughs> absolute specimen. <laughs> yeah. Right, should we, should we go over his international career then? Cool, then. Our favorite. So I'm, I'm more excited to talk about goals and that shortly. So. <laughs> right, let's just skip through this. <laughs> yeah. So, <clears throat> won two Copper Americas in 1991 and 1995. Um, no, 1993, sorry. Was it 1993, wasn't it? Retained it. Aye. Yeah. 91 and 93. No Maradona in either of those squads, eh? Mm. Didn't need him. Still playing. Diego Simeone was in there, though. Ugh. Played in both sides. <laughs> um, Confederations Cup in 1992. Um, didn't really do anything in World Cups, like in terms of progression far, but didn't have score a lot of goals in them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 1994 World Cup, hat trick against Greece. 1998 World Cup, a hat trick against Jamaica. Just, uh, yeah. the, um, first first player to do it, huh? Yeah. Scored two hat tricks in two different World Cups. Beautiful. I like that. Now, as near, as was mentioned earlier, for as long as he was in a World Cup tournament, he was top scorer. Apart from two thousand and two, where yeah, well, he was, he was thirty three year old and <laughs> his ankles were shot. That was his last. His last. That was his last tournament. His last appearances for Argentina were in that World Cup. Mm. Scored in it though, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. He Since Nigeria. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So he scored never well could be played, which really, so you can take that. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. 54, 54 goals in 77 games for Argentina. Only just beaten by Messi. Yeah. Unreal, that. Yeah. That's a great this is a lot. Considering if you said to some, some, not everyone, but random, some random people, like, can you name me five Argentina players? I reckon a good 70% wouldn't say him. I think I would they'd be like, you, actually. would say Batistuta. Would say? Oh, oh, you mean like. I don't know, they would. I reckon, yeah, I, I reckon. I mean, if you I'm just said to someone, them. can you name me five Argentina players from history? They'd be like, Aguero, uh, Messi and Maradona. And then they'd be like, uh, Aguero, Aguero Higuain. Higuain, Tevez. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking I'm thinking people just think the same as me there. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, like, on the other hand, I don't, I don't think they would. I, I really don't think they would. I, I think, think it'd be one of them ones where it's like. On an international yeah. level. It's a, I think it's, it's one of them where like, you see it and then it's, oh yeah, but it's still, uh, but yeah, I, I'm, yeah, he's, he'd be one wouldn't of the first ones that I'd say. Wouldn't more at international level than Messi has? Yeah, of course he has. <laughs> but like, that's what I'm saying. That's why yeah. he's so I'm not, say, I'm, not, I'm not saying he's a better footballer than Messi or anything like that, but he's I got am. a record at Argentina. <laughs> I'll, I am as well. Balls to it. Fuck it, I am, yeah. <laughs> Like he might he might have scored more goals, but in a time where a lot of Batistuta's goals, he's had to fight to get. Like, I guarantee you, the ma- the majority of Batistuta's goals in his entire career, before he's even man- managed to get the shot on target, the shot on goal, there's a foul given nowadays. Yeah, yeah. Right. Oh, he's he probably wouldn't have wanted his foot amputated had he been playing <laughs> nowadays. <laughs> he could walk properly if he was playing today. <laughs> right. Should- I tell you what, should we just move on to favourite goals, lads? Yes. We're all dying to actually <laughs> fucking talk about his goals here. <laughs> right, should we, go, should we go through our favourite goals and then we'll just talk about some goals after as well? That well, yeah, I did my top three that top you asked three. for. Yeah. And then there's, there's going to be numerous to mention. I'll go first. <laughs> in at number three. Not like welcoming your guests in, like, but... Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in at number three. It's the semi-final of the 1996 Coppa Italia against Inter, where it's played through on an angle and where most people watching this would think he's going to blast this in here. He gives the most deft chip that just floats into the far corner. It's fucking beautiful. eh? It is just... (laughs) It's one of them when you're watching, you're like, you know when you... When someone dinks or chips a keeper... And at a height, so you're seeing it loft, and you're always like, oh! like you, <laughs> you take an in breath as it goes in, and you're like, oh! and before you're up, it's just a beautiful goal and a beautiful so, finish. Uh, I, know. I love the fact it goes against it goes against what a typical Batistuta goal is, mm. like in the Aye, in what the it defines. Because you you do kind of, I mean, I've, I've said it multiple times. I mean, he was a specimen and he was powerful. Like you think of Batistuta and you do think Rocket. Yeah, but that that goal was a beautiful goal. That was yeah. just all skill and caress. So that is my number <laughs> three. So go on then, Dill. You can you can you can pick your third. My third is the 1997-1988 season for Fiorentina. Scores a hat trick in this game, and it's a bicycle kick from outside the box versus Udinese. That's mine. Your number three as well. Yeah, is it Udinese? Because I wrote Juve, yeah. Udinese, Siena, all with question yeah, marks because I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, mate, it's Udinese. Yeah, unreal um, goal. Yeah, like <laughs> the simple audacity of it. Like, oh yeah, from outside the yeah. box as well. Nate <laughs> tried one in a pre- uh, pre-season game about a few weeks ago and just totally missed the ball. But like, mm. this is a bit different. <laughs> <laughs> I'm determined to hit one. Like, it's not, <laughs> It maybe doesn't look the flashiest because, like, when you hear like Bicey's now, you think of like Ronaldo's or Bale's because it doesn't go like ping right in the top corner. But it's just where he's from, like yeah. twenty yards out, he's easy. Literally outside the box. He's got to be twenty yards uh, easily, and he's just flung this bicycle kick out of nowhere. Like I don't know if it is, but I hope it's his hat trick goal. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> the audacity makes me think he's on a hat trick, like. I need my third. I'm going to just try something. Yeah, Man. like, it just, like the, 
it's just because it's like there's like a fumbling. The cross comes in and they like they half ass clear it, don't they? Yeah. And it, it, he could easily just bring it down and then side foot it in the same corner that it goes in. But he just goes, I oh, you know what? And he just chucks himself and it just nestles beautifully in the keeper's bottom left. And he's like, oh, there's, he's there's done just, that. There's just <laughs> something beautiful about that sweaty man flopping in the air <laughs> as he goes to do a bicycle kick as well. <laughs> Exactly. Him, and Puyol, him and Puyol amaze me. They can play football at time, Harrow. Oh, no. I, I, yeah. Oh, in front of their eyes, I guess. I, 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 I can't operate in daily life like, without <laughs> my hair tied back. Like, f- for listeners who don't know what I look like, I've got hair like down to my ass. Like, I've really long hair. <laughs> I cannot do sport without my hair tied back. I put my hair in a French plait to do jujitsu because I can't have it in my eyes. <laughs> And he's fucking scoring over 200 career goals. And he can't see fuck all. 22-yard bicycle kicks. Apart from the Argentina manager that he fell out with in the midnight is that made him cut his hair. Yeah, I said yeah, he wasn't going to pick him. Get picked. Oh, didn't that pick him like for... Samson. That could have been he didn't pick him for a Copper America, did he, because of it? Yeah. And he threatened it for the World Cup, and I think he took like, an, like three I centimetres do, off yeah. the bottom. All the <laughs> yeah. So was that your number three as well, there? Yeah, it was, yeah. It was uh, it was my number two. <laughs> nice. I nice. was gonna I was gonna move it to my number three as well. I fucking wish I did now. I wish I did. <laughs> so go on, Nath. Give us your give us your number two. I have gone for. Well, we did, we said we weren't going to talk about it, so let's talk about it. The the heartbreaking goal, the volley against Fiorentina for Roma. It's where, yeah. There's a bit of a build up. The ball gets nodded down and. But I dare say Bob maybe he's about the same distance, maybe a little bit further on. Maybe he's 22, 23 yards out, and he's just struck it and he's fired it straight down the goalkeeper's throat. Like he's just bang. And before anyone's even got anywhere near him, he's crying. <laughs> the, the emotion that comes with this goal as well. It's my oh. number one. It, 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 it was I was going to say, I think it's Chase number one. <laughs> <laughs> it, was my, it was my. It was my. It was my. It was my. It was one nil win. Yeah. Yeah. Like the Roman needed it. It, and, it, he tried a lot in that game as well. Like as much as he, he said in his interview afterwards, like he wished someone else would have scored to take that off him. But like in that game, he tries loads to score he, against Fiorentina. He's just left there in the summer. They had a statue of him at the stadium. By all means, it was like fan made. It wasn't like a. Uh, it was paper mache. Statue. It was a paper mache <laughs> statue, which got ripped down. And at the start of this game, he, he went over. It's at the Olympico. He, he yeah. went over to the 3,000 travelling Fiorentina fans and saluted them, which they, to be fair, like, give them the respect back. Mm. And yeah. Then, uh, he'd done the same at the end of the game. But the, the, the fucking goal, like, what a way to score it, though. Eh? Like, it's just unreal. It's a, He's not even looking at the net. <laughs> yeah, volley from 30 yards out. Absolute rocket. Just bump. He's booing his eyes out after. It's Every a pure single... talk and die from the keeper as well. Yeah. Every single Roma player, it has still been Toldo. That yeah. Toldo's last season at Fiorentina. Every Roma player goes over to congratulate him, and he's just like, he's just a mess. It's just, <laughs> it's just an emotional mess. Like, it's mint, man. Oh man. Oh, just, <laughs> oh, just, just, just hit you. Just hit you. It right does. <laughs> it does. It does. It's oh. It's what a goal, though. Like, the, that, my, my top three have been covered already. Yeah. <laughs> Go on, Dill. What's your number two? My number two is the cushioned volley against Parma for Roma. Yeah. Had to get a Roma. Nearly. Had to get a Roma goal in. <laughs> yeah. But nah, it's just absolutely sick. Like coming over his left shoulder and doesn't just try and twat it as hard as he can with the laces, just nice little. Cushion, dink, got them back in the game because they were one 0 down. Walter Sam with the ball over the top. What a ball that is! Ah, oh. mm. <laughs> yeah. that's not a hoof. That's like a measured. Nah. Yeah, pass. It's, it's just. But can you remember that pass that Van Dijk played last season, and everybody was like, people were like wanking over it. Oh, dude, you never see a defender do this before. Walter yeah. Samuel, <laughs> two thousand. <laughs> like you say, like he does it in front of the away crowd. Like and they just go mad. Uh, the, the two is in between Fabio Cannavaro and Lillian Taram as he takes that ball down as well. Mm. Like the, these 
these aren't fucking Muppet defenders. The, these nah. are two of the best of all time. That's two World Cup winners there. Yeah, two exactly. World Cup winners is like he's got in between, he's glided in between and taken that ball down for that goal. Exactly. Yeah, yeah that's my number two. Brilliant goal. Unreal goal. Go on then, Nath, your number one. My number one? Yeah. It's the goal that made me fall in love with him and it's that one against Man United. The, <laughs> the turn and... My number one. Yeah. It's just... Oh, yeah. Everything it's went everything, beautiful. The commentary and everything. Yeah, yeah. the commentary. Yeah. Everything <laughs> felt beautiful. Although they lost that game, like... It's just he it turn, yeah. turns stand like he's not there. The ball in from Delivio, who had an unbelievable game that game, um, and he just hits it. He just absolutely smashes it's it. And fucking it, like it's what? A rocket, I've, like I've got, it's I've like it's that. like everyone blamed like Bosnic because he it, but it fucking moves right. It does move. And if you look at the video back, right, even like the Man United defenders and the fans are like, oh. Like, uh, where the fuck did <laughs> that come from? Do not let him turn turns again. around and like looks at Roy Keane like, <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> don't let, don't let him turn. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it, it, that... right. I, I wrote the commentary down. Although it's in our like theme, I wrote down right. He turns down like he's not there. And he has a blast right, and then Tilsey shouts, "What a fantastic speed of light strike from Gabriel Batistuta! He's done it again against English opposition, and he's silenced Old Trafford here tonight." <laughs> it's just a bit when he hits it and like he's walking, like he's given nothing but David Beckham and Gary Neville shit for that entire game, and he just walks past David Beckham. He's pointing at him. There's a picture of it on Google. He's pointing at David Beckham, like, and he's saying something to him, like, "Unreal, man." Like, that, that that was the second group stage, though, wasn't it? That game. It was yeah. Against Arsenal in the first group stage. Mm. It was just because that didn't that goal give them the lead. Yeah, they took the lead. They went yeah, one 0 up. Yeah. One 0 up and went on to obviously they went on to lose the game, but die. Nah, it's. it's it's, that is my favourite. That is Oh, that it's is just a fantastic big. hit. If it wasn't for Tildesley and Big Ron on comms, it might have been two. But <laughs> oh, it's just unreal. Like he turns Stan with two touches, and like, no, the ball, no, no. the ball's brought in on his so-called weaker foot. You know what you I mean? Know what like, what, is, like, what, what is lads? We're like, we're, we're so lucky to like have that because I I was watching that last night and I just started laughing to myself. It sounds like a pure sicko, but I was just thinking. Imagine if we had to see that goal today and I've got fucking Fletch and Steve McManaman commentating on it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, you're pure, you're, you're, you're right. You are, you're right. You are, yeah, you're right. It's, it's, not, some, it's, it's some, still some. a great goal, but it's not as good. Like, it wouldn't hit the same. You just made that, like, bang. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, yeah, I love it. Yeah. We are very lucky like, to have like, lived through that time. Like like I said on the commentator episode that we did a while back, at the end of it, yeah, I've been one round. We need commentators in the game. <laughs> <laughs> but it's down to people like Clive Tildesley that like yeah. certain eras are defined by certain voices as well as moments. And Clive Tildesley in the late nineties, early noughties Champions League is just fucking pinnacle for me. I love it, yeah. and that's a great choice. Hey, I tell you what, looking through those uh, goal montages, though, fucking hell. <laughs> you could have done it was hard. 50, it, I, I literally went with my heart for them three goals. Yeah. Like, if I went with head, I, that my 90 goal wouldn't be in the top three. Yeah. The, uh, the, well, that's, that's what it's football's, That's what it's all about. It's what you love, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. It's, completely. It's watching. There's, uh, there's that there many one, good goals. Yeah. He's I got, tell you what, one of, he's, one of, there was a he, great one where there's an indirect free kick against AC Milan. And it's laid off to him. About, I know which one you be. Yeah, about six yards out, right? And he <laughs> puts his foot. The, like the ball's hitting the net before you even like blink. It's about two mil away from knocking someone out on the line. Can you it's, imagine having like set up for that free kick? I'd be yeah. like, nah, nah, no chance. You're all right. It's no just as it's in the world. It's as it's rolling. You just see Barassi just kind of go, nah. <laughs> <laughs> there's, that, there's that many good goals though. Like when you if you search if you search on YouTube, anyone just put in. Battistute with goals. It's like, it's not even just like, it's like top 10 Roma, top 10 Fiorentina, yeah. top 10 Argentina. Like, he scored good goals no matter where oh, he was at. Where he's been. One of, like, one of like the lighter goals I like is that, um, I think it's 98 World Cup, the little chip against Japan where he gets slipped through. I think it's, uh, it could even be, um, it, it might be Veron or someone that slips him through and he just dinks it over the Japan keeper into the bottom corner. Like, oh, and he's got Puma Kings on in that game as well. The, the only one that didn't nearly make mine was a Roma one. It's, uh, 
take a pop a hypocrite myself, but it's a free kick, like right on the edge of the box, right? And the only reason I like it is like the ball at the end of it looks like it's been smashed. Like you could like you can hear the ball going, fuck me, that hit he hit me. <laughs> like hits the bar, hits the back of the net, hits the side net, drops the floor, hits the net, hits the roof of the net. Like the ball just doesn't stop and you think if that net wasn't there, Jesus, he's put like a hole in the Olympic. <laughs> Stewards dead. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a goal for Fiorentina, and I couldn't make out who it was against. Um, where the ball comes in, and he's tried to get behind the keeper. The keeper spills it, and as he's behind it, he has to like improvise and like scorpion kick. Like it. flicks his heel. Yeah, as he's on the deck, and he puts it on the other side. Of the uh, puts it in the other side. Of the goal. I was like that man just knew how to score goals. It meant he like what about like, like what about the ball like exploding off his. But, but like in some of the montages, like you look at his headed goals, the ball bounces off his head just as fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but but again, like he had a multitude of different headers, like diving header, power header, glancing header. Yeah, like, like, he was just like a total threat in the air and all. First he could score volleys, any type of goal. He could score any volleys, type of goal. How many first touch volleys were on that video where the cross is coming in and he just banged straight out of his feet? Yeah, and, but like this, what you're saying there, Jay, like this is a. Uh, the start of the the start of the chapters like uh, always a quote by the player, and his is when I was playing football I never enjoyed it that much I was never happy if I scored two goals I wanted a third I always wanted more and you can see that like oh, anything to score I'm putting it in with my dick my ass my fucking <laughs> my neck I don't care like he knew how to, he knew how to get the ball where he wanted the ball to be I absolutely because ultimately if that ball doesn't go in that net you don't win there's there's clips where you watch and there's like defenders backing off from him as he's running at them because he's just he runs aggressively if you know what I mean uh, like, he yeah. looks frightening he looked frightening when he <laughs> ran because these fucking elbows and knees are everywhere and he's, <laughs> he's just I so couldn't, powerful I wouldn't want to play against him like, yeah. and, like I said, we won. Oh, yeah I just I, just, I totally didn't realise how fast the bastard was like, <laughs> um, as well as iconic goals, anyway, he also played in some iconic football kits. So, lads, do we have a favourite shirt that he played in, please? I'm wearing it. So, that's the 99,000 <laughs> Fiorentina shirts for, yeah. for listeners. Um, mine is this one, but the away shirt, it's all white and it's an absolute thing of beauty. The 2002-01 Roma away, skid at a winning top. My favourite is the 1992-93 Fiorentina home shirt sponsored by 7-Up. Yes, that's a top. Yeah, that's a good one. Like, <laughs> like the sponsored, it's, like, it's a bit understated. It's just basically all purple with a little bit of white trim and the 7-Up logo just fits nicely. Uh, the away kit that season was the one that looked like it had swastikas stickers on it. <laughs> 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 yeah, it did. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you what's another tidy kit. It's, it might be the season after the one that Dill's got. You know the the navy one with the orange the orange trim. Yeah, that's all one or two. The third yeah, kit. Yeah, that is a tidy shirt. That the, uh, there was loads uh, to yeah. choose from. Yeah, and Roma or Fiorentina. There was like <laughs> the O two or three Roma ones tidy. It's the white one as well, which got like that weird. It had like a weird trim in here for some reason. Oh, like a mid trim. Yeah, I know what you mean. I like. I like the one, the the one I've got with Tomasi on the back, the the divide, like the kind of like dark orange and the, oh, like the half, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, the half half one. I like that one in Sick. his Roma days. What a but legend! Yeah, but, kids, what a legend, man! He that, just covers that. all areas, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he? Looks fucking good in purple and, <laughs> <laughs> and and the burgundy of Rome as well. Um, do you want to quiz, boys? Go on then. I don't know. I feel like I'm going to fail badly, but go on. <laughs> Do you uh, pen and paper? Uh, yeah, you might as well. It's not, it's not special. In fact, some of the answers we've actually mentioned during the show, which was inevitable. But it's How, many que- hmm? How many questions? Ten. I'll fail on here. Is but... the answer to everyone, Batty Stuta or Batty Goal? <laughs> uh, play along <laughs> at home, listeners, if you want. Um, it's a quiz on Gabriel Batistuta. And also, listeners, if you have a favourite shirt that he ever wore, let us know. We'll put a poll up to on our social media to see who's uh, that we picked gets voted. 
Yeah. The, the, the ultimate prawn sandwich podcast by Eagle Kit. Well, let us know. <laughs> There's any we have not mentioned. Is you ready, boys? Yeah. Yes. Right. Okay. In the 94 95 season, where Batistuta won his solitary Italian top goal scorer award, which fellow Argentine was runner up to him? What year? 94 95. Oh, might be a bit back for me, that. Runner up to him, runner up to him. Where have you been there? Yeah. Right. Guess. Question two. Batty Stuta finished fourth in the 1999 Ballon d'Or, but who won it? Oh, yeah? 1999. 1999. Yeah. The runner-up was David Beckham and third place was Shevchenko. Yeah. That was back when the Ballon d'Or was just European Player of the Year before it merged with World Player of the Year. Question three. Who was second top goal scorer in all competitions for Roma in the 2000-2001 season behind? It's got to be. Question four should be an easy one. Who plays the pass to Batistuta before he rinses Yaps down with two touches to score against Manchester United in the second group? Oh, no. The <laughs> Champions League. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Question five. Against which team did Batistuta score his last ever goal for Argentina? One second. Bill's just going to blow his nose there. So what? Wild is Dill's tr- treating. Nah, I'm not. I'm not. No, no, no. I'm not. Oh, Every time I do a podcast, the dog decides to get the most fucking annoying toy he can out of a fucking box and <laughs> chew the shit out of it. <laughs> I thought you were going for a pure epic nose blow then, like. Just, uh... <laughs> um, right. Question six. If you were to add. His three squad numbers up at Roma, what would the total be? Bit of a maths question for on him. I'm trying to think of them. <laughs> I know them when you shit at maths. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he only had two squad numbers at Rome. Ah. Uh, oh, mentioned all three before. No, we never yeah. really mentioned the third, no. No, you never. Nah, I'm not even going to guess because I don't know the third one. One minute. Ugh. How bad am I at maths? <laughs> yes, go on. Yeah. You've got to get it bang on, by the way. There's no closest to the answer. It's got to be actual bang on. Um, oh. In 2017, who finally broke his record as the most expensive player aged over 30? So, what was that? I'm here going for this maths, eh? <laughs> <laughs> in 2017, which player? Broke his record as the most expensive player transferred over thirty year old. Uh, I don't even know. Question eight: Who won FIFA World Player of the Year in nineteen ninety nine? Gabriel Batistuta finished third. David Beckham finished second. But who won it? Oh, God's sake, man. <laughs> Question nine. In what year did Lionel Messi break Batistuta's goal scoring record? For Argentina, obviously. In what year? Yeah. I think I said it before. I'm not 100%. It's in my notes, but I don't know if I said it. <laughs> I was trying not to say it before when we mentioned it. And question 10, final answer. How many times did he make the FIFA 11? Oh, Jesus. (sighs) 
Uh, sorry, mate. What was number one again? So anything one I don't have an answer for. Uh, which fellow Argentinian was runner up to oh, yeah. Stewart in the top scorer in 94 95? 94 95, 94 95. I'm going to be gutted with that one if I've got it wrong and scribbled him out. Are you ready for us to run through the answers? Yeah. Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> One minute. <clears throat> right, what? Are you ready to go for the answers? Yeah, we're doing our usual. Say who we've got each, and then. Yeah, say say who we've got. Do you, right. Well, there's just three of us on today, so I'll read the question out. You both give an answer, and I'll tell you what it is. Any drama? Sound. So, question one: Which fellow Argentine was runner-up in the 94-95 season to his as top scorer? Well, I know I'm wrong because I just put Crespo because I didn't know. I put Hernan Crespo because I'd scribbled out Abel Balbo. Nathan Cupid, you should have went with your first instance. Yeah, I thought so. Abel uh, Balbo. Oh, was it Balbo? Yeah. Oh, do you word. Got it for you, Nath. <laughs> <laughs> I've, lost, I've lost the quiz now. Okay, now. I'm on roll. I've won, if I won like two quizzes on the bounce. Ah, what we done? Yeah, I beat you Hugh. Yeah. I beat you Hugh, and then I beat well, Dylan in the FA Cup one. one. Yeah, the the for the Club World Cup episode. Oh yeah, we didn't do one last week, did we? Yeah, I, I, because we recorded a few weeks ahead, saying last week and stuff. Pure confuses us. Um, question two: Who won the nineteen ninety nine Ballon d'Or? Oh, it was Brazilian Ronaldo. I wrote Zidane. <laughs> it was Rivaldo. Oh, if I've got them two questions the wrong way around, I'm going to flip. I say him. That's what I'm going to do. Who was Roma's second top, second highest scorer in the 2000 2001 season in all competitions? I went Montella. It was Montella. It what? Yes. It was, it was Montella. Yeah. We both got that one. Yeah, yeah. That's like Balbo like. <laughs> <laughs> Question four. Who plays the plaster in for his goal against Man United in the Champions League in 1990? Delivio. Yeah, Delivio. I'd have had no chance if Nev didn't say it. <laughs> Wait, against which team did he score his last ever goal for Argentina? I don't Nigeria. Know. Nigeria. That is correct. If you add his three squad numbers <laughs> up at Rome, what is the total number? 71. 71. 71 is correct. His other number, Nath, was 33. <laughs> he took for his age in his last season. Sick. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Apple Balbo. <laughs> <laughs> Question seven. Um, who broke his record as the most expensive player aged over 30 in 2017? Cristiano Ronaldo. I just didn't answer it. Uh, Leonardo Benucci. Oh, fuck. How much was he when he went to AC? Yeah. I forgot they broke the bank for him. And he was shite. He was like, he was like, yeah, he was. Million, wasn't it? He was really bad. <laughs> shite, and I went back to Juve and was like, oh, I'm good again. <laughs> <laughs> um, question eight. Who won FIFA World Player of the Year in 1999? I wrote Rivaldo. I wrote Rivaldo for that one. You both wrote Rivaldo? Yeah. yeah, that's correct. You would in both. Oh, thank fuck for that. <laughs> um, in what year did Lionel Messi break Fatty Stewart's Argentina goal scoring record? I wrote twenty fourteen. Just guessed. Twenty sixteen. Dill takes it with twenty sixteen. Yeah. <laughs> when I scribbled out twenty sixteen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you need to trust your first instincts. Like, you should have been tired or something. Um. Question 10. How many times did you make the FIFA 11? I wrote eight. I wrote twice. Yeah, twice. Uh, yes. there it is. Twice is correct. I overhead that one there. So, Dill, takes, Dill takes it this week. Two, four, seven, seven, four. Uh, the tiebreaker for a bit of fun was just how many competitions has he finished top scoring? Like, how many occasions has he been top scoring a competition? Oh, three. International as well? Five. The correct answer was six. Bastard. <laughs> Unreal. 
So, but that, that's including the Copper Italia. The other yeah, Copper Italia, Serie A, uh, Copper America. Yeah, Copper America twice. Twice in that. Uh, Confederations Cup and the Confeds. Qatar League. Oh, Confed Cup. Yeah. Of course. The- I got the Qatar League. Bastard. It was pure good in Qatar. Eh? <laughs> you see some of his goals <laughs> in that league are phenomenal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. For a bit of fun then, a 1-11 to of players Batistu have played with. Um, just favourites, as we always say, not necessarily the best ones, just our personal favourites. The rules with this one, Batistu had to start up top. Yep. <laughs> so whatever formation you've put has to include <laughs> Batistu. Um, any, I've gone with a four four two diamond. Four four two diamond. Four two three one because I really like that formation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, go on, Endil. Got the whole team, but or just. Um, we'll go through positions. We'll go through all positions. Go on, goalkeeper. Uh, struggled because I don't think he played great ones. I went for Toldo. Yeah, Toldo's mine. Yeah, I told her. I, think I don't think he ever played with like a big, big one, really, apart from yeah, Toldo. Yeah. So. I could only think of Carlos Roa at international level. Uh, I was yeah. going to put Abdon Zieri, but I thought, no, I'll just go with Toldo. And Angeloni for Roma. And I can't remember the yeah. name of the, the younger, or Pel- Pelazzoli or something, whatever. Mm. Okay. But uh, anyway, yeah, Toldo for me as well. Um, left back, Nath. Uh, Juan Pablo Sorin from his days in the Argentine national side a lovely ch- and another lovely man as well uh, lovely <laughs> lovely <laughs> lovely uh, I've gone uh, I've gone for Vincent Candela I've nice Vincent, I've got Vincent Candela <laughs> second choice to be fair yeah. second choice right footed left back with another nice head of hair yeah <laughs> uh, right back Dylan uh, Inter Milan days Javier Zanetti oof good at International level as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, Here's one minute, lads. Okay. Just for the listeners and the viewers, I live on like a main road and there's summer kicking right off outside. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you 20 quid it's Slaters and all the chavs are getting a tan bed now because they haven't had one in seven months. Uh, uh, Dill lives above a pub. And, uh, yeah, what's your pub in Carlisle? <laughs> <laughs> he's told him where he's, he's going to have folk around his house now. <laughs> Sponsor it. Ah, it's kickoffs class. Love it. <laughs> give us, give us, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. You said Zanetti for your Zanetti. Right, That's yeah. a personal favourite. That one, isn't it? Yeah. Mine, oh, 100 percent. Because I know his yeah. players weren't great. Just, but for favourite players, I, but I love him. Like <laughs> Cafu, Cafu. I mean, oh, that was Cafu. who I originally wrote, and then went, oh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Centre back pair in there. Uh, centre back pairing of Maurizio Pochettino and Walter Samuel. Nice. Pochettino was an unbelievable centre back and a head of hair <laughs> and a good head of hair. Of <laughs> what the fucking team of Mainz, eh? Shower's gonna be ages. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing but washing going there. Hold that bus. <laughs> uh, who's your centre back pairing, Dill? Uh, Walter Sam and another cheat of the inter, uh, Fabio Cannavaro. From that season, <laughs> nice. Um, Walter Samuel for me and Roberto Ayala. Nice. nice. Yeah, nice, nice, nice. Shout out Repka. Yeah, <laughs> I originally put Sensini in, in before Pochettino, but I had oh, yeah. Amaruso wrote down. Lorenzo. Yeah, as a maybe. <laughs> it was my <laughs> days when he when about my age when he moved from, when he was at Rangers and Blackburn. Yeah, I don't know why I just thought he was a pure animal. I was like. He's class. Yeah, Sunderland almost made. signed him. I know. Um, right. So at the bottom of my diamond, we have the um, same. Sunderland cult hero, Stefan Schwartz. Oh, no. I've got Damiano Tomasi. I've got him a little bit further forward. <laughs> 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 it is in my side. But yeah, nice. Stefan Schwartz. Stefan Schwartz. Nice. Nice. Uh, Nath. Uh, my two. To us, my two holding in the. Obviously, in the 4 2 3 1, I have gone with Rui Costa and the little witch Juan Sebastian Veron because I am not going to not put him in. <laughs> nice. Um, my two that sit above Stefan Schwartz, Damiano Tomasi, as mentioned, and Rui Costa, as you just mentioned there, Nath. Class. 
That's a good three. That to be fair, loads of legs in there. Balance and Ollie. Mm. My two are the already mentioned Stefan Schwartz, <laughs> 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 and I don't care how young he was. My favourite Italian footballer of all time, Daniele De Rossi. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love a little, little stipulation like the thirty-six or something. <laughs> Sitting at the top of your diamond, Dill? Um, maybe a little bit further forward than he played, but he definitely did it in his AC Milan days. Um, Rui Costa. Nice. So, I like that. I like that. Um, at the top of my diamond sits the god of Rome, Francesco Totti. Yeah, I've got Totti and Cam. Nice. Um, so you've still got... I've got left and right to do, so I'll give you them. Uh, on the right, I have got Enrico Chiesa. Nice. To cut inside and drill it with his left foot. And on the left-hand side, to dribble, cut inside and hit it with his right foot, I've got Ariel Elberito Ortega. Oh, nice. Nice. Oh, nice. A little bit of football manager chronicles getting in there. Yeah. Like, yeah. And, then, nice. and then you've got Totti and Cam. Like, please. Oh, no. And then, and then obviously, bat, good... obviously, bat a goal finishes. And then, goal. obviously, you've got bat a goal up top. Yeah. You've got an attractive 11. <laughs> oh, yeah. Very pretty. There's a lot of hair. Um, <laughs> up top, I've got Vincenzo Montella, partner in Batigol. Nice. Nice. Um, yeah, that's it. That's mine. It, it's fucking obvious who mine are, isn't it? Yeah. Batigol and Totti. <laughs> <laughs> I like how there wasn't much like difference between many of our players. I don't know. <laughs> There's only a couple, like to be fair. Do you want to bash through them in a one quick? Bash through a what? Sorry? Bash through them like we always do in a one. Yeah, go yeah. on. I'll, I'll, I'll rub up mine. Uh, yeah. Toldo in goal, Vincent Candela left back, Cafu right back, Walter Samuel, and Roberto Ayala centre half. Um, Stefan Schwartz at the bottom of a diamond with Tomasi and Rui Costa in the middle of it, Francesco Totti being the tip, Montella and Batagol up top. Yeah, I've got the same formation. I've got Toldo in net, uh, Javier Zanetti at right back, uh, Vincent Candela at left back, Walter Sam and Cannavaro centre halves. I've got Tomasi at my base in front of him, De Rossi and Schwartz. Tip of my diamond, I've got Rui Costa. And partner in Batty Goal up top is the King of Rome, Francesco Totti, managed by Claudio Ranieri. No, nice. yeah, that, that's what I've got wrote down as, as <laughs> yes. <laughs> when, when it's what it's just such a nice bloke. <laughs> yep, pink man, getting it done. I like it. I like Go on, it. Uh, rattle for yours. Uh, so four two three one formation. I have Francisco Toldo in goals, right back Cafu, centre back partnership of Walter Samuel and Maurizio Pochettino, left back of Juan Pablo Sorin. Uh, two sitting midfielders, Rui Costa and Lil Witch, Juan Sebastian Veron. And then three uh, on the right, I've got Enrico Chiesa in Cam, Francesco Totti on the left, Ariel Ortega with Batigal up top. And I've also got a gaffer as well. I've got Ranieri because he's nice. Yes. And then I've got Bielsa next to him to, you know, <sighs> if people need to kick up the ass. I've got Bielsa and kick him, <laughs> kick him up the bum. So you can win no trophies, but be lauded as the best manager in the world. <laughs> silence on the front <laughs> <laughs> right that's it got real Love it. loved it boys that was uh, probably I've got to be honest out of all the player profiles that we've done so far in terms of watching videos yeah. for research that's been the one I've enjoyed the most oh yeah 100% Pro- including all the tournaments that we've done as well that was, <laughs> that was just goal yeah. after goal after goal that was uh, worldy after worldy after worldy oh, the sheer enjoyment yeah well, that's it for another episode. Uh, before we sign off, follow us on Twitter, please, at Prawn Podcast. Follow us on Instagram at Prawn underscore Sandwich. Give us five star ratings wherever you can rate us. That will be incredibly grateful. Um, subscribe to us on YouTube. Like our posts on there. Shout out to our sponsors, T7 Clothing. Dylan's representing, I see. Yeah. In a nice, tidy looking jumper there. Also to the Apple Tree Pub in Carlisle, and book your table now. <laughs> book your table for the seventeenth of May. <laughs> Summer vibes. 
absolutely. <laughs> Uh, shout out to the FM Retro Group as well, Ryan and his team. Uh, another episode of Football Manager, well, another series of Football Manager Chronicles should hopefully be coming your way soon. Uh, <laughs> until the next episode, guys. Yep. Arrivederci. Adios. Sayonara. How's the bacon, did you say? Is Sancho Aguero? <laughs>